Hi girls, Pastor Jess here. Today we're talking about the Proverbs 31 woman and all the different aspects of who she is and who you are. My name is Pastor Jess, and this is the Women Rock Show. What is that about? This is about all of us. This is about us women. Nowadays, the world is talking about so many different things, about how odd we are, or what we are, or what we aren't, and all these different things. But I'm here to tell you that the Word of God is what tells us who we are. The Word of God is what anchors us, and the Word of God teaches us who we can be. Isn't that good news that I don't have to do this on my own, but I have a God in heaven who loves me and who's got my back in this. So today we're going to press in and we're going to start right where it all begins. Proverbs 31. Isn't that amazing? I think about Proverbs. It's such wonderful scripture to read. If you are a new believer in Christ, that would be a wonderful book for you to begin in because the Proverbs is known for wisdom. It's known for the revelation. It's, it's known for God's goodness on our lives. And so if you want to be encouraged and you want to learn, that is a great book to start with. And so here in Proverbs 31, God actually talks about women. Isn't that beautiful? I thought it was wonderful that he ended the book of wisdom with womanhood. Now that says a lot to me, and it's a story between a mother and a son. Now I'm a mom of two boys, and I love my boys. I want my boys to pick the right wife for them because I know that who they link up with in marriage is the future and their destiny of what they're looking forward to. And so here's this mom, and she's talking to her son, and Lemuel is his name. He's a king. He's He's ordained, he's anointed, he's stepping into royalty. And she's explaining to him his position in Proverbs 31. And she talks to him about not getting drunk with wine and, and to hold himself up like a righteous king. But for that, she also begins to say the type of wife that he should choose. Now, all of a sudden, that stops us, right? As we start beginning to read Proverbs 31, in this time, in this day, in this time, in these seasons that we're living in, this crazy world we're living in, it doesn't line up. As you start reading Proverbs 31, you go, I'm not that girl. Ooh, I'm not that wife. Ooh, I'm not. and you could beat yourself up. But that's not what the Word of God is about. The Word of God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Isn't that good news? That even in the crazy different world that we're living in, that even our grandparents didn't live in all those years ago, God's Word is still the same, and it's never changing, and it's present, and it's ready for us and right for us. I love in Proverbs 30, before we hit Proverbs 31, it talks about in the New tra um, Passion Translation. I love that this one because it's so real. It's so raw. It's more like us. It talks like a story, and it says, This generation is rising up that curses their fathers, and they speak evil of their mothers in verse 11. That sounds like us, right? It sounds like the world we're living in now. And then it says that there's a generation rising up that considers them themselves to be pure in their own eyes, and yet they are morally filthy, unwashed, and unclean, then there's a generation rising up. Ooh, gosh, this sounds like where I'm living at right now, that is filled with pride, and they think that they are superior, and they look down on other people. Verse 14 says, and there's a generation that is rising up that use words like swords, and they cut and they slash those that are different from them, and they devour the poor and the needy and the afflicted, and from the face of the earth. This is where we're living. But yet God said in this story that he knew the world would be a hot mess. That's what that's saying. And right now in our time, in our generation, where we're living now, we're living in a hot mess. The moral code is gone. There's no goodness. We don't know what kindness even looks like. People are biting and devouring each other left and right. But yet, here's this mom speaking to her son. And she says, son, I need you to look for a godly woman. What does that look like? And why is God comparing this story to us as women? Well, let me explain why. Because when God talks about marriage in the Bible between a man and a woman, the beauty of it is, is that God gives us the parts of our lives and how he created us to actually coincide together and we become a beautiful tapestry for the kingdom of God. And so this is a bigger picture of just marriage. This is a bigger picture of, of that covenant marriage that God did create because God is now showing us the broader picture of the church and him, which is a marriage. He is the groom and we are the bride. In Ephesians 5, it talks about this. And you can go look for it yourself. Study out Ephesians 5. And he talks about how he is coming for his bride. Isn't that good news? But yet, if you're coming for your bride, God wants his bride to be 
all that he's created her to be, all that he knew that we are capable of being, all that he knows that he put inside of us when we were born into our mother's wombs. You know, I was thinking about it the other night and about how, you know, sometimes the way we get into this world sometimes feels like the rest of our lives are we're beat up, we're broken down, we can never come out of that. Maybe two drunk people got together and had you, but I'm here to tell you today that you are loved, that God loves you so much, that you're anointed to be here on earth, that everything he put on the inside of you, he is waiting for you to come and receive him, get closer to him, so that you can gather all that God has for you and become this righteous, right-standing woman, to be this love, to be his bride, to be everything that God has for you to be. We put this in the practical with our marriages in life now, but also if you're single, God is your husband. He is the one that you are running after. He is the one that is longing for you in an intimate way. And so let's learn what God needs us to be as women. Let's tap into this because the world is telling us, oh, that's so old school, or oh, that's not cool, and that's not this. But I'm here to tell you, wrong. Because the world says what is right is wrong and what is wrong is right. But God says this. Let's go to Proverbs 31.10. I love what he says. This is the beginning of the mother explaining to Lemuel who his wife should be, what he should look for. It says in verse 10, who can find a virtuous wife for her worth is far above rubies. I was looking this up. Rubies are actually more valuable than diamonds. Isn't that amazing? We all should be walking around with ruby rings instead of diamond rings. What is going on here? I've been gypped. But yet God is saying that we are more valuable than any stone that we name valuable here on earth because these are kingdom principles. These are things that God says that are valuable and that he loves us and that when we look at something here on earth, it's cheap to God because God is like, I created that. But the most valuable thing that God created was you. The most valuable thing God put in you is virtue. Did you know that you can be a virtuous woman? What does a virtuous woman look like? Well, a virtuous woman is an awesome woman, a woman who knows what she's doing. And actually in, in the Hebrew, it's hayel. Now I'm probably not saying that right at all, but it means valor, it means strength, it means efficient, isn't that good? It means capable, it means intelligent. Did you know that you're an intelligent woman of God? You go, I do not feel intelligent. I don't feel capable right now, Pastor Jess. I am feeling beat up, busted and disgusted, but I'm here to raise you up this morning. I'm here to tell you that God is good, that God has something for you. And yet you can be this virtuous, amazing woman. You are a woman that is more than enough. You are a woman that God put power on the inside of you, that when you asked Jesus to be the Lord and Savior of your life, that he came and he lived within you, that means that you instantly are carrying virtue. So she's telling her son, you've got to find a godly woman. And Jesus is saying, I want to come back for my bride, and I want my bride to be ready. I want my bride to be available, and I want my bride to be virtuous. That means I need my bride, I need my church to be on fire. I need my church to be capable. I need my church to be ready. I need my church to be intelligent. I need my church to be efficient at all that they do. I love that. I love how God does this. A virtuous woman is someone who is different, who is set apart. You are different. You are set apart. You are called by God. This is who the Proverbs 31 woman is. So what does this Proverbs 31 woman do? Who is she? How do I, how do I become this virtuous woman? Because I don't feel like this woman. Guess what? Feeling is not the issue here. It is what God says. God says you are this woman. When you said yes to God, you tapped into. When you said yes to God, you pressed into what the Holy Spirit has for you. So the goodness of God is going to overtake you. So how do you do this? you got to seek God, girls. We gotta run after God. We cannot allow the things of this world to consume our time, consume our thoughts, and consume our atmosphere. You have to actually seek the face of God. What does that mean? That means that I've gotta be all in. When we're half in and we're half out, then we're gonna get half of God and we're gonna have half of God moving on our behalf. Our virtue is not going to be pure. It is not gonna be blameless. It's going to be full of sin. It's going to have side projects that do, do not um, make heaven happy. You see, I'm after what God wants. I want to be a bride that God is proud of. Somebody that God, that people look at and go, she has something different. Yep, that's right. I have virtue because I carry Jesus Christ on the inside of me. That means I've got to rely on God in every part of my life. The most beautiful thing about Proverbs 31, check this out, is that it is, coincides with Psalms 119. Now you go, what does that have to do? There are 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet and every single verse in Proverbs 31 
actually talks about each one of the characters that God is doing with each alphabetical letter. And so in Psalms 119, it talks about this right now, and, it's, and it says that you are blessed when you stay on course. So when you become a virtuous woman, you're a blessed woman when you're on course with God. Walking steadily on the road revealed by God, isn't that good news? You're blessed when you follow his directions, doing the best to find him. That's right, you don't go off on your own. No, we don't do it our way, girls. We got to do it his way. You walk straight along the road that God has set for you. You, God, has prescribed the right way to live. Now you expect us to live it. Oh, that my steps might be steady. That means that when you feel off course, like you're going to fail, you just hold on. You rely on God. And that virtuous woman knows where her strength comes from. And she knows what is on the inside of her. And she says, no, I'm not going to get off course, but I'm going to hold on. I'm going to serve my God. I'm going to stay on my course. I'm not going to let the devil take me out. I'm not going to let the enemy take out my marriage. I'm not letting the enemy take out my family or my children. You see, this girl knows her God and she relies on him. And then it says, oh, that my steps may be steady, keeping my course that you have set. Then I'd never have any regrets in comparing my life with your counsel. Ooh, that's good. Sometimes we want God to fit into our life. It doesn't work that way, girls. We have to fit in to God's life, God's way of doing things. God's word is how we live, not we live with a little bit of the word. You see, a virtuous woman understands that the word of God is, is her seed, her source, her strength. The word of God is our anchor. It's something I can rely on. When I don't understand what the world is speaking, I can get into my word and the word will reveal the truth to me. And so today we are talking about the truth of God's word. We are talking about a virtuous woman. She anchors herself in and relies on God when her marriage isn't where it should be or where her kids aren't doing what they should be doing. When the, somebody on the job is trying to take you out. I'm here to tell you, you rely on Jesus. You go get into your prayer closet. You become that virtuous woman. You are all that God has called you to be. You rely on God in your every days and he will meet you there. He will. He will be your strength. He will be your step. He will be your, your guidance. Rely on God when life doesn't make sense because God always makes sense, even in the deserts, even in the hardest places, even in your darkest, deepest moments. Rely on him to teach you every day. Get into your word. Be in prayer. Have your time with God. Maybe you have to make a God appointment. And you have to tell everybody else, I'm sorry I'm not available at that time because I've got to be with God. You see, a virtuous woman knows that that's her anchor. John 15, 4 says, live in me. Make your home in me as I do in you. In the same way that the branch can bear grapes by, cannot bear grapes by itself, but you only being joined to the vine, you can bear fruit unless you are joined with me. You see, we can't do anything apart from God. Don't do this on your own. You have to rely on God. A virtuous woman understands that she does not do anything on her own, but she does everything with the Holy Spirit on her everyday walk and her everyday journey. So girls, I hope you got something from God today. If you are looking to know God like we've been talking about, he loves you so much. And all you have to do is reach out and say, I believe, I believe that Jesus Christ died on that cross for my sins. You see, you can't fix yourself up. Only Jesus can fix you up. And so today I want to give you an opportunity to know Jesus. You don't know him by just saying, oh, I want to get to know you, but you know him by asking him to come into your heart and be the Lord and Savior of your life. And so that virtuous woman understands that, okay, I can't do this on my own. I, I need God. And so today, if you want to know Jesus, maybe for the first time, maybe you've been running from God instead of to him and you need to get back to him and you've been backsliding and you've been doing more of your own thing instead of God's thing, it's time for you to get right with God and make that decision today. Go all in. You have nothing nothing else to lose. You are safer in the presence of God than you are in the hands of your enemy. And God loves you so much. And so this is what I want you to do. I want you to pray this prayer with me. And just repeat these words. If you miss a word, it's not about the words of your heart. It's about the attitude of our heart because God is after our heart. He is the one true God. He is the real God and he loves you. He formed you in your mother's womb. And today you are reconnecting with him and aligning your future and your destiny with the one who created you, that virtuous woman. So go ahead and pray with me right now and say, Dear Father God, I come before you and I ask that you would forgive me of my sins. Lord, that you would come into my heart and be the Lord and Savior of my life. Lord, I ask, Holy Spirit, that you would fill me, that you would teach me, and that you would guide me. Thank you today that I am not headed for hell, but I am now headed for heaven. I have a new future. I have a new hope. 
I have a new destiny. Thank you, Jesus, for forgiving me. Thank you, Jesus, for coming into my life and saving me. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, we want to get to know you. We want to know all about you. We want to give you some information because you don't want to do life alone. And so we here at the Rock Church and World Outreach Center have something for you. So if you would go to www.rockchurch.com and let them know that you just prayed that prayer. Somebody will go ahead and contact you and we'll send you some information because you don't need to do life alone. Find a local church, get into the house of God, read your word today and remember who you are. You are a Proverbs 31 woman. It's not about how you feel. It's just about what God made you to be and you pressing into that and learning about it. I love you girls. We'll see you at the next Women Rock Show. God bless you.